you're going to want to grab a paper and pen and take notes on this one. Hey everybody, Coach Brew. Welcome to another episode of BrewTube. You're going to want to grab a paper and pen. As you're listening to this, how many of you actually followed my instructions and grabbed a paper and pen or pencil or crayon or a, uh, what is it, a plume, a feather with an inkwell? Uh, a writing implement of some sort, a magic marker, a scented marker, a sharpie. Any of you? I didn't think so. And that's the point. So often, I either attend a physical meeting, back when you could actually get together in groups of people and sit down at a table and meet. So often, I would attend meetings and now with Zoom, I'm on Zoom calls, strategy calls with either current clients or prospective clients. And people aren't taking notes. I'm taking notes. You know, they're bringing me in to coach their people. And I, have, I am armed with a paper and pen. And I'm taking notes. And that's a frustration point for me, but it also ought to be a frustration point for you. You know, the, uh, the arrogance of someone not taking notes should frustrate you. It should also be a cautionary tale because it's either, it's arrogance on either of two fronts and either way they're wrong. Number one, front number one, they're arrogant in the fact that they know more than you and they have nothing to learn. Now, really, what are the odds that that person has nothing to learn from someone, anyone? You know, life's a curriculum, we're the students, and everyone you meet has a lesson to teach. That's my theory. It's also the principle behind my book, Seeds of Success, which you can get at seedsofsuccessbook.com. Hashtag shameless self-promotion. But really, what are the odds that you have nothing to learn from somebody. A hired gun, an expert that your organization has brought in, or that maybe you sought out to help you. Um, so that's front number one. Front number two is arrogance that they'll just remember it all. I have a great memory. I don't need to write stuff down. It's all up here. Steel trap. What was that you said? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, it's arrogance in either front, and both are dangerous. You know, it's John Wooden once said, it's what you learn after you know it all that makes the most difference. And it's so true. If you think you got it all figured out, if you think you got all the answers, hell man, you don't even know the, the right questions. And arrogance that you think you'll commit it all to memory up here, Now, like, you could rationalize all this by saying, hey, the Zoom calls are recorded, if they're recorded. So I, you know, I have a, uh, a documented record that I can go back and refer to. <laughs> That's great. When was the last time you actually freaking did that? And you went back and referred to the content on the Zoom call. You're on a two-hour Zoom. You're already exhausted from pretending to pay attention to that thing. You're not going back for two more hours. Right? Hey, I just got waterboarded. I, I, I'd like to get waterboarded again. I think I'll go back and do it again. No. You're not doing that. You have Zoom fatigue. You have listening fatigue. And it's a very real thing. No matter how engaging or entertaining the content is, you know, we lose, atten we lose our ability to pay attention at best after 20 minutes. So, you should be taking notes. It's the equivalent, in my opinion, of professional malpractice for you not to be taking notes in meetings. Your doctor's taking notes in the exam room. They have a documented chart of everything you discuss, a transcript. So if you're offended that your doctor is not looking at you and they're typing into a computer or writing on a pad, 
in your physical chart, think twice. It's called accuracy, right? 250,000 people die each year due to medical errors. Maybe they ought to spend more time taking notes and using checklists and documenting things, right? So be glad. Don't be frustrated. And if you think about it, if that's the, uh, the batting average for physicians in the medical community, what do you, you think corporate's any different? If you're not taking meticulous notes and paying attention, you honestly think you're not making expensive financial mistakes? Yeah, even just qualitative mistakes, not something you put a dollar value on, just qualitative. It's happening. You're just too arrogant or ignorant to realize it. So I just had a Zoom call, a strategy session with prospective clients this morning, um, which is why I decided to make this a topic of conversation. And it's not a bone of contention I necessarily have just with them. It's a general trend, you know? And, you know, if it's happening once or twice, rest assured it's happening a lot more often in a lot more places and something I've noticed. Uh, also, as I said before, many times success leaves clues. So um, it's something I notice successful people and successful teams don't ever do. Show up unarmed, so to speak, without a notepad and a pen or a pencil so you can erase your mistakes. Yeah. So my daughter just went to freshman orientation at our, at our high school yesterday. And I'm driving her, I'm getting ready to drive her there. And she comes out of the house with nothing in her hands. I say, excuse me, where's your notepad and pen or pencil? She's like, it's just orientation. It's not just orientation, it's first impression, your teachers, your guidance counselor, your peers, the principal, the administration. It's first impression everyone's going to have on you at your new school. And there's also important things you're going to need to remember, you know, with social distancing. Do I go up the north stairwell and down the south stairwell? Um, which hallway can I travel east in? I mean, these are literally the conversations taking place at schools across the country uh, due to COVID and the pandemic. So if you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, at the time of this filming, it's August, the end of August 2020, and we're in the middle of the coronavirus, Wuhan flu, COVID-19 pandemic, whatever you want to call it. So they're having these conversations. Do I go east on this hallway and west on the other? Like, where do I go? North? On that stairwell south on this one, how do I get to the cafeteria? Which way is the gym? What hours are, you know, when are we allowed to go to the bathroom? Like, you're not going to remember all that. Grab pen and paper and take notes. And a funny thing happened after she rolled her eyes, hung her head, sunk her shoulders down, and sort of sulked back into the house to get a paper and pen. We're in the car, in the parking lot early waiting for people to show up see all the other freshmen show up you know they come rolling in one by one two by two here and there they're getting out of their cars and I see the coaches kids different parents who coach at the school or coach at the rec level you know these successful coaches guess what their kids had yeah a notebook and a pen the kids were there to take notes. What do those coaches do? They take notes. And that's at every level. This is just a microcosm, a micro example from a macro issue. Successful people take notes. You, you never see it more than with college and professional coaches and their teams. You know, I show up uh, at a Major League Baseball facility to speak to the coaching staff at training camp. 
and these are people who have achieved at the highest level. Like they, they can't get any higher professionally in their career. They all have a notepad and a pen, and they're all taking notes. If I see the tops of their heads instead of their eyes when I'm talking to them, it's actually a really good thing. It's not because their head's on the desk sleeping, it's because their face is buried in their notebook and they're taking copious notes. Copious is a big word for a lot, if you miss that and you're not a reader. Um, college teams that I speak to, the most successful teams. I could tell you a successful team from an unsuccessful team without looking at their record, without looking at how big and fast and strong they are. Show me the meeting room. Show me those kids, young adults, walking into the meeting room. They have a guest speaker or they're having a meeting with their coaching staff. Are they walking in with a notebook and a pen? If they are, that's a successful team. Make no mistake about it. If they're not, it's probably one of the big reasons why they are getting an F- in life and their sport. I'll put it to you that way. How you do anything is how you do everything. That's the big takeaway here. If you think you're smart enough to remember it all, you're not smart, you're ignorant or you're arrogant. If you think there's nothing left for you to learn and that's why you're not taking notes, looking at you, yeah, if you think you're smart enough that you don't need to take notes because there's nothing left for you to learn, there is so much left for you to learn. You're probably not gonna learn it. This message isn't for you. You can just go ahead and bypass this video, give it a thumbs down, whine, cry, pout, curse me, complain, whatever you want to do. This, this message isn't for you. There's some people who are just never going to get it. Those who don't get it never get the fact that they just don't, quote, get it. If you're not a note taker and you want to be one, I've got a great resource for you. Google Muji. M-U-J-I, pens and notepads. Why Muji? As opposed to just going to, you know, the pharmacy or Staples or wherever and grabbing a Bic pen and uh, a notepad. You want to go get a Muji pen and notepad, and here's why. And I learned this from the uh, director of sports performance at the Pittsburgh Pirates when I was uh, over in Pittsburgh talking to their coaches a couple years ago. I had a chance to just kind of chat with Brendan. His name's Brendan. Um, I had a chance to chat with him on the field during batting practice. And he said, hey, you're a writer. What do you write with? And yeah, I'm not a pen or a paper snob. I write with whatever I can get my hands on, you know, whatever's on sale at the store. I used to. Now I use what he recommended. Um, and I told him, I said, I'm not fussy. I just use whatever I got. A lot of times it's a tiny little notepad or an index card and one of those little golf pencils because they're easy to carry and they're small. He handed me a pen and a notepad. He's like, I think you'd love this. I said, what is it? This paper feels amazing. It's got a great feel to it. He said, it's a Muji notebook. They're Japanese. Yeah, I know it's not made in America, but this is super high quality and it's not expensive. Uh, I make some exceptions for stuff like this. I said, why do you love this so much other than it feels great? He said, the exact size of this pad, I can fit it in my front pocket of my shirt. I can fit in the back pocket of my pants easily. It's perfect size. It fits in every shirt, every pair of pants. And the pen is super high quality. The ink consistency of like the rollerball, even distribution of the ink. I know like I'm going down a huge rabbit hole here, but it's important because little details matter. And he said the ink dries immediately on the paper. It doesn't smear. I'm left-handed, so when I write, my hand, you know, my palm uh, right here is rubbing across the paper that I just wrote on. So that tends to be problematic with a lot of ink pens and a lot of types of paper. So again, success leaves clues. Here's the takeaway from that. Details matter. The most successful people, the people who perform at a very high level and enjoy what they do, 
find every little edge, every little advantage, and they utilize it. Right down to the kind of paper and the pen they take notes with. So from that day forward, I became a Muji pen and paper fan. Let's see if I have, yeah, I have my pen right here that I can show you. Muji pen, clear. You can see how much ink you have left. Check out Muji, M-U-J-I, super high quality, different size paper, uh, different colored pens. I go black pen and the uh, notepad that fits in your back pocket of your jeans. So that's what I have for you today. Become a note taker if you aren't already. If you are a note taker, ratchet it up a level. Improve the quality of your writing implement and the paper you use. And remember, it's what you learn after you know it all that makes the most difference. Head on over to coachbrew.com. Sign up for the Daily Brew, which is my newsletter electronic newsletter when you sign up you'll automatically get a 12 page special report how to double your sales double your results and uh, you're going to want to take some notes when you read that catch you in the next episode of brew tube